Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. My name is Maddie, and today we're gonna to take a look at codecs and how to export your films to maximize your video quality. A lot of people will edit this amazing film and they'll color grade it really nice and then they go to export it and their export settings are just so bad that when they put it on YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, it just doesn't look as good as it could. So what are codecs and how do we export to maximize the quality of our films? Every video clip you record has a specific video codec. Most codecs are H.264 that you're filming in your camera, but you can also have ProRes footage and even RAW. And there are other codecs, but those are usually the three that appear in cameras. So when would you use which codec? So most of the time you're gonna be filming in H.264, especially for things like YouTube and smaller videos where you don't need the most insane video quality. So let's start off with RAW. RAW would be the highest quality you can possibly get out of your camera. And most cameras don't even shoot RAW video. They might shoot RAW photos, but they don't shoot RAW video. But there are cameras that do shoot RAW, like the Reds and Black Magics. They shoot RAW, and that's keeping the most amount of information in your footage. So when you go to post, you have the most amount of information in your video clips that you can possibly have to color grade and to manipulate whether it's with special effects or, or keying green screens or whatever it is, it's gonna have the most amount of information in your video clips. The downside is, is that the file sizes are massive. They're gonna be huge and really hard to deal with. So for most things like YouTube and stuff, you don't really wanna be filming in RAW because it's a bit of overkill. You don't really need that extra level of quality for YouTube. So. For high-end feature films, a lot of times they're filming in RAW, or if you're shooting a short film and you really want it to look amazing, shoot RAW, try it out, and see how that workflow goes for you. But be aware of the massive file sizes. Next we have ProRes, which is not as good as RAW, but it's one step down, I would say. So it's still really good quality, a really good codec. Um, you're not losing too much information, but it's not quite as good as RAW. ProRes is a codec that you wanna be using when you're editing, especially if you have a big project going on. It's really important to convert to ProRes because your editing software will work much better with a ProRes codec than H.264 or anything else. So when you're editing, you wanna be editing with ProRes footage. Even if you shot in H.264, you wanna to convert to ProRes, which we'll talk about more later. And also, if you wanna save a master file of your video, which I highly recommend, it would be good to export it in a ProRes codec to keep as much quality and information in your master file. And then we have H.264, which most cameras use. This is the most common codec. And it's not the best quality codec, but it's pretty efficient, so your file sizes are gonna be much smaller than with ProRes or especially RAW. So most of the time you're shooting in H.264, then you're converting to ProRes for your edit, and then you can export a master ProRes and also an H.264 for YouTube or Vimeo or wherever you're putting it. And then you're saving RAW for those really big, high quality projects that you just wanna maximize your quality. And I just wanna say, I'm not an expert in codecs. This is just what I know. This is my workflow and how I use these different codecs. So you filmed your clips in H.264 on your Sony or Panasonic GH5 or whatever your camera is. Now, how do you get that into ProRes? Well, there's a bunch of different programs that you can use to convert that H.264 footage into ProRes. But the two main programs that I use are MPEG Stream Clip, which is a free program, and then Adobe Encoder, which is part of the Adobe Cloud software package. So if you have a subscription, you're gonna have that. MPEG Stream Clip is free, but it's a little bit more tricky. You might have to install the ProRes Codex. Um, just look up a YouTube video on that. And then once you have that, you just select your flavor of ProRes. There's different qualities of ProRes. There's LT, which is the smallest file sizes, but worst quality. Then we have ProRes 422, and then ProRes 422HQ. So there's different qualities of ProRes, and which one you choose kind of depends on what camera you used and how much information that camera puts into that codec. Most of the time, you're just gonna use the ProRes 422 codec. 
For the most part, I'm using Adobe Encoder and it's really easy. All you gotta do is make a preset. So you click that plus button. Then you choose QuickTime. Then choose the ProRes 422 codec or HQ for the best quality. Then click render at maximum depth and choose use maximum render quality. Then you just drag and drop your clips onto that preset and it'll convert them to ProRes. Quick tip is to set the destination folder first so that when you drag all those clips onto that preset, they're automatically exported to that folder that you want them to be in. And the reason why you want to use ProRes is that it's going to be a lot easier on your editing system. Especially with cameras like the GH5, the codec is just not so good with Premiere, at least right now. So it really helps in the editing process so you're not getting all this skipping and lagging the whole time. ProRes is also better for color grading, so if you're going to color grade your footage a lot, make sure you're converting into ProRes first and you're editing with the ProRes files and not the H.264 files that came out of your camera. I hope that wasn't too confusing. If you don't know what's going on, look up some other YouTube videos on ProRes and H.264. There's tons of resources on that stuff. So you've shot your footage, you've converted it to ProRes, you've edited your video, and now you're ready to export. So what are the best export settings for your videos? First off, like I talked about earlier, you wanna export a master file. And the reason why you wanna do this is just in case Someday you want to reuse that video, you have a master file that has the highest quality possible and you want to export your master file in ProRes. And I would probably do ProRes HQ because you might as well make it the best quality possible. So again, choose the QuickTime format, then for video codec choose Apple ProRes 422 or 422 HQ. And then you're ready to go export that master file. And then for the actual video file that you want to upload to YouTube or Vimeo or wherever, you're going to want to export it in H.264. So choose H.264 as your format, then click match source, choose render at maximum bit depth, and then I would choose VBR2 pass. And what this does is it goes through your whole video and it analyzes which frames need more information and which ones need less. So if you have a wide shot with a ton of detail, the quality of each of those frames is gonna be higher than let's say if it's just a shallow depth of field shot of a face, you don't need as much information there to make it look good. So the VBR2 pass will make sure that those images or those frames that need a lot of information have that information and those ones that don't need as much don't take up as much of the bitrate. If you have no idea what I just said, just do it as I say, choose VBR2 pass. So basically it's just spreading out the bitrate and not just making it consistently even because some frames need more information than others. It will take a little bit longer but it's totally worth it. For 1080 I would choose a target bitrate of somewhere in between 20 and 25. And for the maximum bitrate, I would choose somewhere between 30 and 35. For 4K, choose the target bitrate somewhere between 45 and 50, and the maximum bitrate somewhere between 60 and 70. Then click maximum render quality and you're good to go. Let's say you wanna export your video in an anamorphic crop where you have those black bars on top and bottom. Well, the best way to do this is actually to go back and change your sequence settings. And so for 1080, you would keep the width at 1920, but the height you would change to 817 or 816 rounded down. And in 4K, the width would be 3840, and for the height you would select 1634. Then resize and move around your clips so they fit in that anamorphic crop properly. Then you wanna make sure the export settings are the same and you're good to go. When you upload that to YouTube or Vimeo, you will have the top and bottom black bars and you'll have this nice cinematic anamorphic crop. And the reason why this is better than just overlaying black bars on top and bottom is that if somebody has a widescreen monitor, they can actually see it in widescreen and not have those black bars on top and bottom because that's what their monitors are built for. All right, guys, so there you have it, plain and simple. I hope it was simple. I hope this helps you to export your videos in a better quality so that your films are gonna look better when you upload them to YouTube and Vimeo. 
because that's the worst. If you put in a ton of effort into your video and then you export it and it's just not as good quality as it could be, you're just losing out and it doesn't cost you anything to export it in a higher quality. So that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels.